Well, I am happy because it's Brain Awareness Week, and uh, that means I think there should be a brain video every day, wouldn't you say? I would say so. Okay, so what what can we say about the brain? Well, let's let's start with really gross anatomy. Gross as in coarse, right? Cortex, that wrinkly bit of the brain that has four main lobes. Five if you consider the insula a separate thing, but let's not let's not go there. Four lobes, frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal. And now the first thing is, why are they named that? Well, the f they're named after the, roughly speaking, the bones of the skull they're under, hence the skull here. So the frontal lobe is easy. This is the frontal bone, right? You see there's a, special, a specific suture here, but frontal bone, that makes sense, front. And then you have parietal. The Latin word paries means wall, and this kind of looks like a wall, right? It's kind of a big, somewhat flat-ish, uh, structure. Then you have the occipital bone, occiput, back of the head, which, by the way, uh, because of genetics, is actually uh, stamped with your date of birth, your skull too. I bet you didn't know that. Not everything I say is true. Now, um, finally, temporal, temporal bone. What's the, I mean, occiput, back of the head, parias, wall, frontal, front, makes sense. Why temporal? We don't know. I really don't know. I think there are various theories about the etymology of that word. My favorite one is, this is kind of the, the part of the hair, men grow gray first, right? So temporal, passing of time, se non è vero e ben trovato. Pretty much it. Okay, now, they always say, come on, it's, this is not difficult, it's not brain surgery. As if brain surgery is that difficult. You just lift the skull, the little magnets there, it's really not that difficult. I don't understand what everyone's complaining about. Okay, now, here you have a brain, right? Cortex is the wrinkly bit, and this one is held together by magnets, so if a part falls off, I'm sorry. Frontal lobe, temporal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, but where does one end and the other start? Let me zoom in a bit. Because if you're a student and you have a textbook, then it's always easy because one part is green and one part is yellow, etc. But if you have a real brain, it's not that easy. Now, this is not a real brain, but it is a cast from a real brain. Okay, so this is pretty realistic and this is, I would say, life-size. Now, how do you know where one part, one lobe starts and the other ends? Well, first of all, the temporal lobe is really easy. You see this big sulcus here? A sulcus is a groove, right? And a gyrus is a ridge like this, but a sulcus is a groove like that. Here you have the lateral sulcus. And the lateral sulcus is also known as the sylvian fissure. And uh, that separates the temporal lobe from the frontal lobe and partially the parietal lobe. Now that one's easy to spot because it's so big. And it's also lateral, right? It's, it's uh, kind of in the same uh, plane as, as the brain, so to speak, the horizontal. Now, the other ones are much harder. <laughs> there is the, um, uh, this, this big fissure, right? The longitudinal fissure. Uh, that's easy because it separates one hemisphere from the other. But the other ones are tough. So... What would we say? I would say that this, do I have some sort of, here. This thing, I'm following it here with my pen, right? That is the central sulcus. And that separates the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. And if you're a somewhat advanced student, then this would be motor cortex the precentral gyrus, the central sulcus, and the postcentral gyrus is the somatosensory cortex. Okay, so that separates frontal from parietal. You can also see how big that frontal lobe is in humans, right? Provided that I have the right sulcus here, but I'm pretty sure I do. You can see how difficult it is, right? It's not that easy. It's not that easy. And there are numbers, but I, I refuse to check the manual. That would be cheating. Okay. So, frontal, temporal, sylvian fissure, and then we have parietal. Now, somewhere here is going to be the parieto 
occipital sulcus. And that one is hard. I would be inclined, you kind of have to look on the inside for this. Yeah, I was right. I think I was right. You see this part here? That I believe to be the parieto occipital sulcus. And that separates the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. And the reason I checked inside, I'm going to break this one up. We can talk more about this another day. You can see that the parieto occipital sulcus kind of has this sort of V shape. Okay? Okay. Well, that's pretty much it. I think that's what we should... I think, what do you call that? I think this is the moment to call it a day. Frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital, skull bones, fissures that you look for. And finding those fissures, finding those sulci, that's not that easy, as you have seen. Hashtag boom. Back for more tomorrow.